Hello everyone. Welcome back to my Master Your Marketing Masterclass. And today in my hot seat, I have Amanda Eloesh. She is San Francisco's leading spiritual success mentor. So she is in the Bay Area today and I have Amanda in a hot seat. How are you today, Amanda? So good. So excited to drop in with you today. It's awesome. In fact, I was just watching her Facebook Live on Facebook and she had this hummingbird humming around her all day. So this is a good day for her. I feel like she has lots of yummy energy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Always good. Well, what we're going to, we're going to dive in today and learn from Amanda, something that I think is so important in marketing and that's finding your niche. I like to say niche it sounds, I don't know, more European versus niche. Maybe niche rhymes with bitch. Maybe that's why I don't like it so much, but <laughs> in all honesty, niche sounds so pretty and fluffy. Right. So we're going to talk about that today, which I'm super excited. But before we dive into that, Let's learn as much as we can from Amanda, just her personal story. How did you get to where you are today? How did you get to be the San Francisco leading spiritual mentor? Dive mm. us in. Mm. <laughs> well, uh, you know, what happened is when I was in uh, elementary school, just 11, 12 years old, I was, in, I was put in a program for gifted kids mm. and I was taught about guided imagery at that very early age. And I became fascinated with how the mind works. I was having really powerful um, epiphanies and uh, kind of like connection with source that was way beyond what anybody around me could understand or help me with. But I was having these connections showing me the infinite nature of the universe. And so I was trying to kind of like wow, you know, I'm capable of amazing things. And then when I was taught about guided imagery and then learned about uh, placebos, I was like, wow, human beings are amazing and we can do miraculous things. So why aren't we? Yes. <laughs> and so I became really fascinated with studying psychology and spirituality and, uh, and over time, just my fascination and then also source, the connection with source. So I kind of bring science because I'm kind of geeky and like the scientific approach, but I'm also super woo-woo. So I, I kind of just let the breadcrumb trail of my personal fascination and spiritual guidance, little breadcrumbs lead me. I never at 11, 12 years old thought, this is what I'm going to do for a living, you know? Right. I'm going to put my purpose together, but I, but I, you know, followed my passion. And so for over 30 years, I've been studying the subconscious mind and, and dropping in and tuning into source about the super conscious how we access the divine, how our imagination works in um, synthesis with that higher source of wisdom and the subconscious stories that keep us stuck in repetitive, painful patterns and how do we break through that. And so that's it in a nutshell. I love it. <laughs> As a child, though, you, you have that. That's so beautiful. I know life kind of takes us through, I have a 13 year old daughter and last night she was in tears thinking, what am I going to be when I grow up putting all this pressure on herself? I'm like, how about you just be 13? A million things or you need to figure it out. <laughs> That's right. Just be 13. Just get yeah. through eighth grade. <laughs> oh my God. Being a teenager. <laughs> yes. Is, wow. But it's true. There's a lot of that. And I know she's super brilliant, super empathic, like her mom and feels and sees things. You know, as a child myself too, I get visions and, and I would see auras and colors and I like, does anybody else see this? And you kind of, I don't know if this happened to you, but I kind of shut it off after a while. Cause I thought if I tell anybody, they're going to think I'm weird. I don't want to be different. Mm -hmm. So you suppress it a little bit. And then I just blossom the last 10 years. I'm just mm -hmm. like, Nope, this is who I am. This is who mm -hmm. I get to be. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah. it's very important part of your journey. You know, yeah, I think absolutely. we do get stuck in the head stuff. I'm like you too. I, I seem to attract a lot of people all in this, um, this masterclass that we're putting together, a mix of woo woo and a little mix of rationality and the, the logical. So you mix us two together and it's a perfect blend. It's the magic blend. Yes. Especially for business. <laughs> <laughs> you need them both. Yes, you need the structure and so on, or you'll, I would be off in la-la land most yeah. of the days. <laughs> mm -hmm. So let's dive into the niche part of business. Honestly, it is something sometimes it finds you before you find it. Why is it so hard? I know when people start business, I work with a lot of startups, 
they're, they're stuck here. Like, I don't know what my ideal client is. I don't know what I, they want to be health coach. Well, that's super broad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the narrowing it down, go, they go into the lack thinking yeah. of if I do that, I'll miss this person over here. So why do you think it's so hard to really narrow that down and find it? Yeah. Well, the, I mean, the obvious ones are the first ones we come across is that when we're in service, we will help whoever creator puts in our path. And so we are, you know, I think most of us feel like I'll help anybody. I'm here to help right. whoever creator wants me to help. But if you're going to market yourself, you have to narrow it down. And the reason that it gets so hard really on a deep spiritual level, because we, we kind of get the like, we don't want to, the scarcity mind frame. We kind of, people have been talking about that. But in my own business training, uh, my mentors shared with me the book, The War of Art which is an amazing book about resistance and yep. you know, mine's right there. Literally yeah. like I and can they, reach and grab it. <laughs> exactly. And they, and I put these two pieces together. So they were sharing how when you're marketing, you kind of, it's when the first narrowing of your audience is you kind of look at, am I helping people with business and finance? Am I helping them with like love, sex and relationships? Am I helping them with health and nutrition? Am I helping them with spirituality? You know, there are like these four yeah. or five basic categories that help us to, to kind of start to pare it down. Yeah. And then when I read the, uh, the war of art, he shared with us the like four or five main ways that resistance shows up and guess what categories it shows up in money, finance, sex and relationship, health and nutrition, you know, and spirituality. And it's like, oh, well, <laughs> our biggest sore spots. And so resistance is what, how the subcon, what I've learned in my studies about the subconscious is the way that the subconscious programs, because they're stuck in survival mode and they're keeping us small and anchoring us below our potential and below our purpose to keep us safe. It's right. like, even though this reality sucks, you know how to navigate it, so don't mess with it. <laughs> so they're, they're hiding out in the subconscious, and if we try to shift it, it puts up resistance and the resistance shows up in these categories because those are the entryways to our elevation, to our breaking through. And where I believe that we're all here to help people, right? And the, the ways that we are shaping how we can help our people is by the wounding that we've experienced in this lifetime. It's not a punishment. Nothing that we've gone through as children uh, are punishments for not being good enough. Uh, it's all strength training to help us to gain understanding and wisdom and badassery. And so, but they're really tender parts of ourselves. So to really land on your niche, to really know who you're serving, you have to land on your most tender spot inside of yourself because all the entrepreneurs I know and my business mentors share that to really rock it, your business has to be a, a huge part of and integrated with your spirituality and your spiritual practice because you have to be constantly willing to be a few steps ahead of the people that you're helping and on the mm -hmm. forefront. And it, you can't be on the forefront if you're not willing to look at your own crap. Because then you're, you're a hypocrite. Right. And we want to work with people who walk the talk. And the only way to walk your talk is to be constantly going in there into the sore spot. And so that's why we don't want to land on who we're actually here to serve. Because our number one person we're here to serve is our own evolution on this planet. Right. And it's tender. So we're like, we start to land on it. Like, oh, no, 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 no. It's something else. We're always, I think, I think really at the base of like the scarcity story or the, I don't want to narrow, I don't want to exclude people. I think really at the core of it is I'm too scared to actually step up and live the raw, transparent, vulnerable uh, life of a, of a, a real uh, spiritual 
entrepreneur, because we all are, if you're an entrepreneur, whether you claim it or not, you're, yeah. you're in some, you know, cause we're putting ourselves out there, the spotlights on us. And if we don't know how to be human and to make mistakes and forgive ourselves and move forward and be loving and kind with ourselves, oh, all those failures that are required to move forward, they'll just kill us. They'll just eat us up. Absolutely. Yeah. You're right about entrepreneurship to me, I think is like the ultimate life changing machine. It's such a way to really grow with yourself and finding your niche from what I'm hearing you say is one more step into that peeling back the layers and really looking at your core. Yeah. How beautiful is it to guide people through some, your own fire at the same time, or always be one step ahead, like you said. Um, and it is, it's always the one thing you don't want to talk about. It's always the <laughs> one thing you think, oh no, that's in the closet. It's locked up. We are not talking about that. Oh, not today. And it's like, and I'll pull it out because I have a client that's a health coach and she's got a past of, she's overcome addiction. I'm like, you could really work. I don't want to talk about that. It's like been 20 years. But I'm like, but that's powerful. So yeah. powerful. And for you to even, she doesn't even want to talk about it in her bio, nothing. Mm. And I'm like, okay, big circle around that one. <laughs> We need to revisit this. This might be a hot button. This might be your ticket because marketing, it truly is has to be in alignment with you. We can feel your marketing. I say this all the time. We can feel it. It's not just words on a page. Exactly. It's not just an image. There's so much energy behind it. So very interesting. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going a little inward myself. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's stuff. It's not just the clients. It's Carrie Lynn. What are you doing over here? Exactly. So. It's good yeah. stuff. But I do, I, I will sometimes put myself out there in something I want to grow for myself too. And so my clients just get to come along with me is kind of how it is. Link mm -hmm. arms, let's go. Let's make this happen. Mm -hmm. It's kind yeah. of fun. Yeah. So, so why do you think, other than what we've touched base on, in marketing world, logistically, going into the logic side of things, why it's so important to be more narrow than broad with your marketing, with your messaging and so on mm -hmm. how does how does that convert better because again some people think broad is best yeah well we we want somebody who gets us yeah and if you're if you're speaking in in generalities it doesn't really you know <laughs> land in our hearts like you know i i you know i've been helping like every woman who i've been helping has an i'm not worthy story and mm. so to share my own, like, oh, this is, the, this seems to be the thing I'm helping women to live a purpose-driven life of prosperity and to know their worth. It's like, oh my God, that's me. <laughs> People don't know that you're talking to them unless they can relate to what you're right. saying. And right. if you're speaking in broad, generic terms, that yeah. doesn't really... So it doesn't catch anybody's attention. It's like a public service announcement. Nobody right. listens to those. But if I, you know, if you say, are you a woman, you know, a, a professional woman who's been struggling because you don't feel like you're worthy? You're constantly feeling like you're not being seen and your gifts are going to waste. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Identification. <Check>. Right. <laughs> yeah, she gets me. And mm -hmm. that's why. And, and so... I feel like we, you know, there are plenty of people, there are millions and millions of people in the world, you know, and our purpose is to help our people. And there's no, there are no mistakes. And as soon as we're willing to dial it in, we're, the, they're going to show up. Absolutely. Yeah. I like to say your marketing to show your humanness. I'm sure you agree. There's a lot of pitching, a lot of talking at people, like you said, a public service announcement. That's like, that's the perfect <laughs> example. <laughs> beep, 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 you know, yelling in your face. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, change the channel. They're not talking to me. That doesn't relate to me. And if it, in some pitching and marketing looks that way, especially those yeah. that are kind of doing the copycat content and exactly. it all sounds, you just scroll past it on your Facebook, Instagram. It's just another thing. But yeah, when it's a, a conversation starter that starts with, especially with the question that sucks you in that hook, I'm like, yeah. I get you. I've been there. I know what that feels like. Mm -hmm. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Very cool. 
So you've talked about spirituality, which I think is amazing. I really want to connect on that because in this series, we haven't gotten a chance to go super deep and that's, that's just who I am. I, it's a part of me. It's just, that's how I resonate. I just see, you know, energy, everything spiritual. Why would you ever want to go around not plugged into sources beyond me? It's like walking around with a blindfold on (laughs) in the dark, like, Oh God, hoping for the best. (laughs) But, um, you know, our entrepreneurship, and again, you mentioned this too, and this just seems yummy to me. Connecting on, not because I know some, I don't, there's a, probably a few sharks on Shark Tank that might not be so spiritual <laughs> as <laughs> entrepreneurs, not to call anybody out, but uh, it's a little heavy over there, but I'm still, still very <laughs> impressed. But overall, why do you think it's connected? Is it because we're creating every day? Is it because we really don't know what that next step looks like? Why do you think entrepreneurs tend to be a little more open to that spirituality versus that person that's just like, I'm going to punch in and out, go through the motions. That's, I know it's a deep question, but I yeah. can't help it. <laughs> oh, you know, it, it makes perfect sense though. I mean, entrepreneurs are at the forefront. We're to survive, you know, the, the entrepreneurs who are successful, which is what every entrepreneur wants to be. So if you're going to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to be at the forefront, which means you can't be doing the template of a job. You can't be doing something that somebody already did last year or even last month. Uh, and for me, uh, I, I mentioned this in my, you said you were watching my live stream earlier. Uh, what I real like, I was told what to start talking about in that live stream. I didn't know why it seemed like two totally disconnected things. And then as I was like doing, I'm like, Oh, I get it. I get what you were doing. <laughs> and, uh, so it's like, I am pretty smart. I'm a pretty smart person. And yet when I'm open to source and like, okay, you tell me it's something that's greater than me. That's guiding me. And that's how I stay on the forefront with these new ideas because they're, they don't come from ego, which is awesome, which is limited. They come from this greater source. And then it's like, oh, wow, that was awesome. I, uh, so I said, well, I don't, you don't actually have to be very smart or do a whole lot of planning to do awesome things. All you have to do is tune into source because like, oh, that was the perfect date and those are the perfect people and those are the perfect elements. And I didn't plan it out. It just came, it was told to me to do it that way. So entrepreneurship, I think, essentially means being a, a pioneering thought, you know, leader and why not get some really great perspective on that thought leadership. Absolutely. Yeah. From the chain of command. It's a beautiful space. Yeah. I'm all about (laughs) co-creating with something way bigger than me. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, takes the pressure off. I love that because we are the creators. You know, we are the ones that are stepping forward. We're not, you know, we're stepping into leadership. You have to be a leader in order to be an entrepreneur. You really, truly do. Yes. You have to have those skills and learn them quickly. Um, if you're not born with them, I swear I was, I was the bossy kid in the neighborhood. So Me I think too. I was born with mine. <laughs> Amanda was one of my nicknames. <laughs> My mom said it politely. I think Carrie's just very influential. Yeah, mom, that's bossy. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> we know. I was just that girl. But, you know, it is what it is. You get to step into your power as an entrepreneur. It's really nice to be you, you know, without any rules, constrictions, boxes, and censorship. You get to just truly be your authentic self, which is so much fun, which is why your marketing should also be authentic. If you, you truly get this gift, don't try to fit in a box of somebody else's success story be your success story and I see it all the time and it's it is definitely the spiritual side now I also attract and I like I said in the beginning I think sometimes your niche finds you even though and you might avoid it like you said kind of like the door you keep shutting no no not that one um I I attract empaths I attract them everywhere I have a goddess tribe free group on Facebook that I just want to nurture those girls I just like love them up because I didn't know that's what I was for so many years. I just thought something was wrong with me or something was different or I was sensitive or fragile is what the next boyfriend would call me. Yeah. So they do, you, you do, I think after a period of time, there's signs all around us of where we need to go. 
Yeah. And, and that was, that was kind of my like knock on the, hello, wake up. You're pulling them in as clients. You're pulling them in everywhere. There's something you're doing mm -hmm. <laughs> that says these empaths also need to know that they, you know, skills and gifts and abilities. Yeah. It's not a curse by the, by the way, if you're mm -hmm. listening to this and think, Oh God, I hate being sensitive. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. It's superpower. So how, how have you helped clients with their niche? Because you did mention the four kind of, I think it was four quadrants. It could be five. Health and nutrition, spirituality, money and business, love and relationships. Was it five or four? For some reason, I keep thinking there are five, but the fifth one's not popping in right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. We've deleted it. It's floating around. We have to hit rewind. <laughs> I didn't do my homework. <laughs> <laughs> You're a good girl. It's all good. Because <laughs> I start my clients there too, like pick a box. <laughs> pick your sandbox that you want to play in. You know, and just kind of go from there. How do you narrow it down even more so? Because let's say money and business is where you want to play. And money's a big one. Let's admit everyone, even, even people that have billions of dollars still have money belief issues. Mm -hmm. If someone's oh, going to yeah. steal it, someone's going to take it away. Yeah. I'm not good with money. All these stories, it doesn't matter. There's just more zeros behind their problems. <laughs> so, so how do you narrow it down even more from that? If we can give some tips to our audience, mm -hmm. that's, that still seems broad to me. Yeah, as far, well, so the, the specifics of how I help my clients is in the one-on-one -on -one work, we do subconscious success repatterning, mm -hmm. which is a system that I created, kind of sparked at 11 years old and that passion and putting together a system of how to access the subconscious and really go deep and connect. And oftentimes there are, old memories of childhood experiences. So uh, if you were to do one-on-one -on -one work with me, that's how we would do it. But as far as tips for the general viewing audience of this conversation, what I would say is, and this is a part of a program that I created called Live Your Purpose and Prosper, that is to remember what it was you were passionate about as a kid and you probably got in trouble for it which is some of where the trauma begins is like it. One example is I did child welfare for many years before I freed myself into being an entrepreneur. And there was this, this uh, kid, mom was getting really angry at him and um, spanking him. And so I had to go out and talk to her about it. And he was a total gymnast and he was like always like doing these flips off the couch and stuff like that. And she's like, see, like he's so, such a naughty boy. And I'm like, no, he's not naughty at all. He's like a gymnast. We need to get him in some, he's just really physically active and, and actually really darn gifted. So let's get him some classes. And so it's real. you know, it's funny how parents, I don't know where it began, but it seems like the things that bring kids to life the most tends to be the thing that annoys the adults the most. Yeah. And so then they get in trouble for it and then they feel shame and then it goes on into the subconscious. And so to remember what, what magic superpowers did you pretend to have as a kid? Um, what were the things you loved to do? <laughs> what were the things you got in trouble for? Those are all keys to finding what that is. And again, if if you find it confusing or overwhelming, it's because you're getting close to a subconscious mm -hmm. pattern that's got some trauma and I would get some help so that you can really go deep and get okay with it. It's not only so you can know what your niche is, but so that you can be confidently <laughs> leading people in it instead of traumatized by doing that work with other people. So true, wow. So it's definitely a journey from what Amanda's telling us. I love that. <laughs> Sorry, there's no like magic button. You need to, going within though, I love it because I've, I've worked with some coaches that have really worked on the deep healing with me as well. And it is, it's usually that trigger, the tears come, you just know you hit that button. It's time to heal that part of yourself. And I think sometimes at most times, the best healing process is to help others through it too. It's like a part of you that heals that inner child at the same time as you lead them through it. Mine was stop being so animated, sit, shut up and sit down. You talk too much. 
I did three years of theater. I get to public speak on stage. Yeah. I'm, I'm crazy dumb animated. People <laughs> are like, oh my goodness, she's more than a speaker. She's like acting it out. Of course I am. <laughs> yeah. That's little Carrie that gets to play now right. <laughs> and get paid for it, right? <laughs> so I'm one of five kids. It was like, oh Lord, we got oh, this bright, bright, bubbly one over here. <laughs> yep, <laughs> I totally relate. <laughs> That's so amazing. I love that you touched on that. Interesting. It's the one thing you got in trouble for. So think about it, guys. What did you get spanked for? <laughs> But again, that can be really traumatic for some people. Of course. Some of us getting in trouble meant standing in the corner, or yeah. getting grounded. For some of us, getting in trouble meant some really intense consequences. And so that's why, uh, just as with a master's in counseling psychology background, it really is important if you really want to be an entrepreneur and you've got some trauma. It doesn't have to be intense abuse but if you know that you're really tender and every mm -hmm. time it's you can't go there or you don't want to go there get some support so it's not scary and if you do unearth some really powerful and intense old feelings that haven't been metabolized yet you've got somebody to hold you mm -hmm. every successful entrepreneur i know has a team of people helping them so that they can rock their own path of evolution. So yes, get help. Absolutely. Get absolutely. help. <laughs> yes, the best of the best have coaches, mentors. Sometimes they've got three or more by me, around me for different categories. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes it's okay, this is the mindset piece I really need to focus on. I need to shift over here and this, learn that. It is, it's, it's huge. Super smart to be super supported at all times. I love that. So yes, going deep into the wound isn't always the fun thing to do. Um, they're like, what's this got to do with business? <laughs> I have to do what? Cry? Carrie's saying we're gonna. It's gonna hurt. <laughs> if you're lucky, that's all you have. To do. I know. Crying's awesome. That's easy. <laughs> little post traumatic stress disorder, waking up with nightmares. <laughs> yeah. It's all good, but you know, it, it resurfaced in a job. I worked for a global business coaching company for about five years and I had a CEO at the time that always was like, you are such a, and we had a profile assessment. So she would, that we used was the disc. I don't know if you've heard of that. Tony Robbins uses it as well, but a high eye is a bubbly, loud, obnoxious person in her head, <laughs> but we're the promoters, we're the public speakers, we're the social butterflies at times. And I can be very introverted as well. But she would just say, Carrie, go to your desk. You're such a high eye. She'd say it like it's a bad thing. You're such a, I'm like, I am your top producer. You, you hired me to be this girl. I'm like the front of your company. <laughs> but it's a bad thing. And that old shame of Carrie, sh sit down, go in a corner, go be quiet. Children are meant to be seen, not heard. All those deep wounds came up, you know, and you could feel it in your throat. Like I'm not allowed to speak that lodge in your, in your, you know, throat chakra area. So it's beautiful. It's so true. You know, being an entrepreneur now and just like wrote my book, Permission to Be Me, I get to be Carrie. Yeah, girl. Mm. <laughs> and everyone else gets to be you too. You get to be yourself. Yeah. Promise. Yeah. I give you all permission. Good mm -hmm. stuff. Good stuff. Yummy, yummy, yummy. So let's jump into, Amanda's got this great gift for us. She's not going to leave you guys hanging. She's going to help you go a little deeper. <laughs> so explain what that is. Well, it's the most valuable things that I've, you know, come upon and that I share with my one-on-one -on -one clients. And that is my uh, ebook, which is called Unlock Your Success Codes. And it's uh, a pretty quick read, more like an e-booklet, all that explains the, the uh, system that I created to access the subconscious patterns that are stuck in painful survival based programming and how to shift them with a sense of compassion and kindness and gentleness and yet it's also lightning fast so there's a quick ebook and then so that you can actually start using the system without memorizing the ebook i have a guided journey that takes you through it Hmm. And um, yeah, you can use any time. And then for those of you who don't want to try to DIY it <laughs> and would like some actual, like I, yeah, that's great. And I would love to just have Amanda 
help me as much as possible and want to talk with me about the different programs that I've created there. I have a hundred percent success rate and I tailor make packages to fit the needs of my clients so that they get that 100% result. And if you want to talk with me about working with me and what that would look like, then uh, there's a consultation in there that's also part of it. And it's all a gift. And I don't normally offer it as a gift, but it's all a gift for your people. Beautiful. Yeah. That's very generous of you. I love that. I, I don't always recommend the do it yourself. It doesn't work as well. <laughs> Some people are awesome though. Some people can. Yeah. Really cool. I like to say you can't see the picture when you're in the frame. So there's so much <laughs> outside perspective we need. Exactly. And it's Thanks. just like, Oh yeah, I didn't notice that. And unless you're really, really good at taking a step out and looking inward, you know, which is also a learned behavior yeah. um, and trying to see things through new eyes, but that outside perspective, the education that Amanda can provide accountability, all that stuff that coaches and mentors get to give us mm. is what makes us takes it takes us to the next level. It really does. Mm. We just don't sometimes see it. We've got our blinders on, you know, and we just don't see it. It's right there. <laughs> right. <laughs> like like the client I talked about with the, the addiction. No, we don't want to talk. Oh yes we do. <laughs> mm. yeah. And if she could be missing that alignment to her business over and over and over again, unless someone calls her out and says, this is the hot spot we need to really focus on. Yeah. I know it's not the easiest. And usually it is the one thing, like you said, it's the one thing you don't want to talk about. The one thing that you think, oh no, I don't want to bring that up. I think I've overcome it and leave it there. And Let's it's just the keep one it buried. thing that every one of my clients has told me that made them really want to work with me was my transparency and me owning my own Challenge. You can say shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. I own it. And they're like, it just <clears throat> makes me feel so safe. And like, I could trust you. And, you know, you're not hiding anything. And I get to be like you, which is a human, which takes a lot of pressure off of people. Yes. Isn't that spew? That's just beautiful. <laughs> I get to be a human? We get to be a human. We get to make mistakes and not yes. have severe punishment for it <laughs> absolutely don't you love those people that show their human side you might have them on a pedestal they walk on stage and they talk about i just ran my pantyhose i got a big hole here you're like <laughs> i love you even more you know it's just like we lean in you're not we can't identify with perfect but the show us your human side you know yeah. that i can relate to your so people good. will love your imperfections Mm -hmm. your people will love your imperfections and the people that don't why would you want to work with them anyway it's not your tribe no (laughs) it's not your tribe it's okay they like vanilla and your strawberry it's okay they're not your people (laughs) Mm -hmm. it's good stuff any final thoughts for our audience today before we let you go Wow. I don't know. I feel like we, we really covered a lot. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, no, I, I feel really complete and uh, yeah, looking forward to connecting with your people and uh, staying connected with you. Thank you for this invitation, Carrie. You're awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love my goddess sisters. It's good stuff. <laughs> it's good stuff the more we can do together the bigger ripple effect we get to have out there in the world it's much more powerful for sure well that's awesome amanda you are welcome and thank you everyone for joining us today we'll see you in our next episode bye guys